What's up, Facebook? Uh, I'm here with my brother. What's up, y'all? And I wanted to catch, um, I wanted to catch him before he went back to the Philippines, um, and just include him. And I'm going to be including uh, from time to time other worship leaders um, uh, on this topic of how can we reclaim the Christian music industry. And um, uh, today, um, I want to talk about, like I said last week, I want to talk about white music versus black music or contemporary Christian music versus gospel music and why there's even a difference. Um, should there be a difference? And um, how can we uh, kind of erase the line that separates uh, white music from uh, black music? And um, if you don't know, I started this video, uh, this vlogging about the contemporary, Christ the Christian music industry um, three weeks ago because I just felt like the Lord, uh, the Lord put it on my heart, a passion on my heart. You know how you walk into a room and you see s some injustice and, you're, and you say to yourself, somebody needs to do something about that. How come somebody doesn't do anything about that? Um, well, the Lord impressed upon my heart that I'm the, I need to do something about it. Um, and, uh, so this is my step. This is, these are the steps I'm taking. It's just, um, making people aware. So, uh, today, just real quickly, we're going to talk about it. And, um, I want to get my brother's feedback on, uh, cause he is, he's the former worship leader, worship pastor at, uh, River of Life Fellowship, where I now am the worship pastor. I took his place. Yeah. Um, but he has also been, uh, he's been on, the, he still leads worship uh, at the church in the Philippines and doing more missionary work and pastoring now. But um, he's had a taste of the music industry and um, on the secular side and as well as the gospel side. And would you say that it looks the same? There is no difference? I would say it looks exactly the same. And if there was a difference, the Christian side would be mm -hmm. worse, right? Because you know what you're getting, right? With with people who are, quote unquote, lost, right? Right? You know what you what you get is exactly what you expect. Right. You expect you expect them to act lost, right? In the Christian industry, it, it's a lot worse because right. you you are continually being surprised by how lost the Christian industry really is. Right. And, and the truth of the matter is. The Christian industry is not run by Christians. Right. It's run by the lost. Right. And so they, they tell you what they want you to sing. They tell you how they want you to sing it. They tell you where where and when they want you to sing it. And you your your rights right. as a, a believer um, are completely under their control. Right. And so if you mess up. Of course, it's going to be exploited because right. they don't really care about Christianity. They don't right. care about and and my my thing is this. Um, I pose the same question to the world that uh, Lucifer posed to Adam and Eve in mm -hmm. the beginning of the Bible. He said, "Did God really say?" Right. I pose that right. to the Christian industry. Right. Who said? Who said? And this is what you need to ask yourself: Who said you have to do music this way? Right. Who said that a real song is comprised of having a verse, then going into a chorus, going back into a verse, going to a chorus again, sing it twice, then do a bridge, right, chorus right, right. out? Right, Who right. said that? Right. Who said that that's the, the staple uh, for worship and praise, right. for doing contemporary songs? Who said that you have to have this instrument right. in order for it to be complete? Who so said that takes us into... What we're going to talk about today, the difference between white music and black music, mm -hmm. contemporary Christian music and gospel music. Yes. What, uh, why shouldn't there be a difference mm -hmm. in it? And why do you think there is? Because it's controlled by man. Um, the Bible says this. He said, those who are led by the Spirit, those are the ones that I call sons and daughters right. of God. Right. And so... In a nutshell, <laughs> we're not really being led by the Spirit. Right. We're being led by what people tell us. Right. And we right. take it as Bible. Right. And and um, society, up until this point, 
they've been led by pastors, right. great pastors, mm -hmm. um, some not so great, um, great praise and worship leaders, some right. not so great. And they go, okay, because I've watched them, that must be the truth. Right. Instead of going, how about I find out the truth on my own? Because right. I got my own Bible sitting right here in my right. room. How about going, okay, I'm going to read the word. I'm going to listen to the Holy Spirit. Right. I, I tell people this all the time. I mean, it's more than just music. Right. It's in music heavily, but it's in just daily living. Right. That's where wor real worship is. That's what Romans yes. 12, 1 and 2 says. Mm -hmm. But how, how, because uh, I, 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 I talked about this last week, how we all start off like that. They all start off like, I want to minister the gospel through music. I want to use my gift but it gets uh, skewed because it's the industry is run by people who all they care about is money, mm -hmm. making money, meeting the quotas, getting the units. Um, and now they go from wanting to share the gospel to making money. Mm -hmm. The gospel gets lost. Their relationships get lost, uh, uh, get put on the back burner as if they're husbands, if they're wives, it gets put on the back burner. Um, but where did the divide come in from... Uh, where did the divide come in from having worship music that touched everybody? Because I remember, um, and I'm going to say it. I'm just going to say it. I remember when Andre Crouch, when we first started really listening to him when I was a kid, um, his music touched everybody. There was no line. He, mm -hmm. he didn't write white music. He didn't write black music. He wrote music that everyone could get with. But there was a certain time in the early... Uh, in the late 90s, up until his last few albums, where his music sort of became more black mm -hmm. and uh, less and less white people wanted to buy his albums and more and more black people were buying his albums. Mm -hmm. um, and the line got really, really heavily darkened uh, between uh, black people, black listeners and white listeners. Mm -hmm. why, why do you think the industry has made it like that? I, I believe, you know, speaking for Andre, um, and hopefully I'm right, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I believe the the older he got, the mm -hmm. less he didn't care. Right. Because he, he had already done everything I believe he was supposed to do. He, this was an, he was an icon. Mm -hmm. So anything he writes is going to be great. Right. But he didn't care. When he was, when he was younger, he wrote what came to him. Right. But, but I would like to say back in that day. Yeah. There wasn't such a strain as it is now. That's true. Um, but I want to say that I think that the industry overpowers people. They go in there lost. They go in there with the wrong mindset. They think that okay, because I'm signed, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be rich. Right. And their and their their motives might be really pure. Like okay, I'm gonna give to the kingdom of God. I'm gonna right. give to missionaries. I'm gonna make sure that God's word gets out. But they don't understand that when you sign a contract, right, you're owned. Right. And so I, I think the separation comes from the fact that they get overpowered by the industry. And now, uh, after so many years of being overpowered, it's just like it's just like laying down on a bench, yeah. holding up 300 pounds. Yeah, you can do it for a second if you're strong enough. Right. But I don't care how strong you are. Eventually, you're, it's going to give way. Right. And so um, it's basically religion. You keep doing religion. It gives way. The and, moment you're led by the Spirit, that's right. when you walk in freedom. And I think because, like, like we said earlier, because the industry has pushed money, yep. people have less time to spend, like with what um, our, our friends Jenny Stavali and Brian Stavali, like what Jenny said last week, less time to spend developing an intimate relationship mm -hmm. with Christ. They probably did. Before they got signed, mm -hmm. but then afterwards, all that goes out the window. Um, but it's happening in churches now. So we got white music and we got black music, mm -hmm. and the whole act of worship has become divided. So, like I said in the first video, that um, if you don't do, uh, the record labels are telling you by the songs that they're spinning. Um, how frequently they spend them in an hour on the Christian radio stations, what songs you need to be playing in your church. And if you don't play them, then you aren't really having a worship service. Um, gospel music says 
that if you're not playing these chords, if you're not doing these riffs, yes. then you haven't experienced or encountered the Holy Spirit. Yes. And we all know, I'm, you hear me saying, you hear us saying it, and you know that's not true, but it is true. Look in your look Sunday morning at your service. Will your musician stop playing and just pray and just sing a cappella to the Lord with no music? Will they do if you're at a white church? Will they do? Will the pastor let them do it? Will the? Pa <laughs> I mean, that's a. I mean, you right. gotta. You gotta. I mean, it's the truth. Right. The pa it's not the mindset. That mindset yeah. has seeped in not in just to the worship, but into even the leadership. And right. I can say this. Because I'm a pastor. Right. And so I'm just saying it like it is. Right. I was I was gonna say, listen, walking in love, that that's one of the greatest commandments that the Bible gives. But yeah. walking in love means I have to be a steward over the lives that I am affecting. Right. Right? So if you are getting your uh uh, your examples right. from a worldly system, right. then how can you expect to walk in the kind of love that God has said, right? So what you're actually walking in, if we're just going to get to the bare bones of it, right. you're walking in a state of being evil. And you're calling it love. Because there's only good yeah. or evil. Yeah. There's only good or evil. There's no, there's no, there's in, between. no in between. But we have lived so long in the in-between because we've We've changed the pursuit from a pursuit of God to a pursuit of money. Yes. Because the, the Christian music industry. And what does the has, Bible say about money? The love, the love of money of is, is the root of all, of all evil. And that's how the church and that's right. the Christian community, as far as music is concerned, right. that's what we're walking in. Right. Evil. It's evil. Right. But when you walk in love, then you're walking in freedom. That's right. Right? But that love only comes from Christ Jesus. That's right. That love can only be birthed out of a relationship with the Holy Spirit right. and being obedient to him. And so you find yourself when you do that going, you know what? No, I am not writing this. That's right. And this is what I'm hearing. Right. So this is what I'm going to write. You go, well, if I don't get signed, right. I don't get signed. So that's, that was going to be my next question. What do you think besides us doing these videos and making people more aware, what do you think will bring about a change Someone said to me the other day, um, so what would you do if you had your own Christian label? And one of the first things I said was, I would, I'm not signing anybody. I wouldn't, I, you'd have to sign them just mm -hmm. for, for business mm -hmm. sake. But at the same time, the stringent schedules and the, and, um, the having to have songs written, uh, that is what makes people write songs that aren't biblically, biblically sound. That's what makes people uh, stay in the studios trying to finish mm -hmm. uh, meet, meeting deadlines for contracts. They miss out family time, miss out uh, time with spending, spending with the Lord. So what do you think will change that? How can we change it now? I believe you come together and you say, listen, I'm not doing this to get signed. Right. And because I'm not doing this to get signed, help. Let's help one another. Right. Okay, I don't have the best basis, but right. I know that you play good and you want to play for Jesus. Right. Come help me with this right. song. And then you go, this is how we're going to promote it. We're right. going to promote it through other ways. Right. And then as people go, this is what we like, the industry has to accept that. Right. Because the greater number is going to go to what... Um, uh, what God has been trying to do this whole time. Right. This will stir a revival because right. a revival, if you go, all right, I want money, then you're going to be stuck. That's right. You're going to be stuck. Right. You're going to be unfruitful. You're going to be, who can use that? Right. Your heart's not in the right place. Right. Right. But if people go, you know what? We're going to work together on this. Right. And yes, yes, we're different churches. Mm -hmm. Yes, we're different colors. Mm -hmm. But we're going to come together and we're going to lift up the name of Jesus and um, like heaven, like we're that, in heaven. Because that's what heaven looks like. Uh huh. The he heaven does not, I believe when we're singing around the throne, God is not going to say, you know what? Uh, I need um, all of the uh, Dove Award winners and all yes. the Stellar Award winners to come up and sing because those are the ones who truly will get us into the presence of the Lord. No. No. And, uh -huh. that, and that's another phrase that bothers <laughs> me. Come lead us into the presence of the Lord. We don't have to do that. We don't have to say that, but we do because it's churchies. 
Jesus said, when two or three of us are together in my name, because He's of already me, there. I'm already there. You don't have, we don't have to do anything, no special songs, no special nothing. We just have to be there and accept what his presence brings. Listen, I, I'm a firm believer that a lot of the Stella Award, Award mm -hmm. people, um, they will get to heaven and be living in a shack. Because they did not do what God told them to do. Right. They they thought they were because they got rich. Right. 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 But no, you got your blessing. That's a good you point. You just got That's it. That's a really I believe that there are many pastors out That's there really good. who are walking in what they think is su success. Right. Because they have great numbers. Right. And they are filthy rich. And they're going to get to heaven and be living in a shack a because pastor, they didn't do what God told them to do. There's a pastor from Hawaii. I can't remember his name, but... Um, I was watching the um, the DVDs by um, um, James McDonald. He's a pastor out in Ohio called the Elephant Room. I don't know if you ever heard of those. They have a bunch of he has a bunch of pastors and they kind of do like a forum setting like oh, this. That's cool. So he had this pastor from Hawaii, and um, he told him he wanted to know what one of his greatest temptations was, and he said, "Well, the devil knows that he can't get me with drugs, alcohol, sex, all stuff like that, but." What he can get me with and what I'm guilty of is doing more for the church or the gospel than God ever asked me to. Mm -hmm. And he said, the Lord told me, he said, I'm not going to judge you based on, he said, I'm only going to judge you based on the things that I asked you to do. Mm -hmm. So all that other stuff, mm -hmm. it kind of <laughs> makes you think. It kind of makes you think. Do only what God has asked you to do. All that other mess it's just that it's mess, and you're, it, it's what it's what um, the Old Testament says. There's a way that seems right. Mm -hmm. There's a way that seems right because we think we're doing all the things that God wants us to do, like mm -hmm. you said, but because it because it fits that because box, it fits the box, the box of what the, the world says is success. Even and now the church is saying right. success is what the world says is That's success. Right. But God says your That's ways right. aren't my ways. That's right. Your thoughts aren't my thoughts. I would like to interject this. Uh -huh. For you who are watching and and um you may not be a singer, but right. you're watching this. Right. I I tell everyone this. I say, listen, the Bible says, um the part it, it speaks of the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And it says the part of the body of the Christ that's seen is important. But right. the part of the body that's not seen has more importance. That's right. And so you may have not that's even why it's covered. ever, yeah. That's why it's yeah, covered. Yeah, that's why it's covered, right? <laughs> you may not have ever walked in what God has told you to do because you it, you have never seen it done. Right. Because of the box that the world is showing you, the box that the church is showing you, you don't fit in. You don't fit there. You're you might be the appendix. Right. You might be the butt crack. Right? But you have to you have to go, God, okay, if I'm the appendix, if I'm the butt crack, I have never seen anyone operate in that. Right. But I'm going to do it because I want to be obedient to you. I may never get a thank you. Right. I may never get a pat on the back. I may never get a stellar. I may, I may never, never get a, get a Grammy. I may never get an Emmy. But I'm going to do what you said, right? Watch what happens. Right. I guarantee you. Because when the body operates the way it's supposed to, a healthy organism. You have a healthy, that's right. A That's healthy right. organism That's right. can do greater works than Jesus did. That's right. Because Jesus went to the Father. And it's not about and and next week we're gonna talk about um should we have stellar awards? Should we have dove awards? Do are Christians supposed to be Paul said that we apostles are are led from the we we are brought in at the back of the parade in chains. Hmm. He said that's that's how our life is. He's not saying that's how we should live, but he said we're not supposed to be striving for fame. We're not supposed to be striving for fortune. Mm -hmm. The parade is going, everybody's cheering, and we're at the back. Mm -hmm. That's what Paul said. And um, the Lord showed me a long, a long time ago regarding um, the music industry. It's really for everything. But if your goal, if my goal starts off being um, to spread the gospel, mm -hmm. right? But I get into the music industry, and that changes to I got to make money because I have to meet the contracts. Mm -hmm. Then guess what's going to go out the window? The gospel. And the gospel's going. And what are you at this else. point? You're disobedient. I'm completely disobedient. So you can <laughs> never, you can never chase the outliers. Mm -hmm. You can never chase the outliers. You always have to chase the main thing. The main thing, as a Christian music 
musician, a Christian singer, a Christian artist, a worship pastor, a worship leader, my number one goal is to lift up the name of the Lord, not just through music, but through my life. Mm -hmm. Everything else mm -hmm. will come. Mm -hmm. Everything else. That's what Matthew 6, 33 is about. Seek he said, seek first. first. Seek don't seek God. the outliers. Don't seek the clothes. Don't seek the money. Don't seek the, the house, the car. If you seek that stuff, then you're going to lose the kingdom. He said, seek first the kingdom of God and everything else. All the outliers are going to be added to you. You seek the kingdom, you stay in the kingdom. Right. Don't stop looking for, and that's the problem. We need another, and I love Chris Tomlin. I love him. I, I, I didn't used to. Um, I love Hillsong. God is using them. I love Matt Redman. God is using Matt Redman. He's using um, the uh, Nicole and David Binion. He's using them. He's using... Kim Burrell. He's using Fred Hammond. He's using Kurt, Kurt Franklin. I love these people. But at the same time, they're in the industry. Not, uh, I'm not sure about the Binions, but a lot of those other people, they're in the industry. They're signed. They have to produce mm -hmm. or else they're out of their contract. What happens if you take that contract away? I just want to see. Take the contract away. Take the deadlines away. Just do the songs that God gives you in the middle of the night. Mm. Sing, write, sing those songs. Sing those songs that God gives you while you're driving down the street. He just, boom, song pops in your head. Sing a, write the song after you've had an argument with your husband or your wife that God just puts in your spirit about forgiveness, about love. Sing that song. Because mm -hmm. it's going to mean way more than the song you had to write to meet a deadline. Mm -hmm. It's going to mean way more. I believe that's why every once in a while, these artists, they have like an amazing song right. that that you you know came from God. Right. And um but it's max right. around all the other mess they had to come up with just to meet a deadline. Right. And it's like hopefully someone hears it, but but God is much greater, He's much than, greater. than the industry. Um and I know that his word has gone forth because there are people that are living living for God. Yeah. And they want to please him. Right. But my point is how much greater will it be when you just be obedient? Right. From the beginning. Right. And then you go, God, fame, fortune, like we, like Kirk Franklin's song. Right. No fame, no fortune, no riches or gold. I'd rather have Jesus. Right? Even right. though that song is old, the bottom line is, okay, we sing it, but do we believe it? Do, do we, we sing it? it? Do we live it? Right. So we practice. The Bible says practice righteousness. Mm -hmm. That righteousness is you doing what he said. Mm -hmm. Anything else is wrong. That's right. So... Doing what God said. Doing what the Holy Spirit said. You guys, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for sharing this video. Like I said, the whole purpose for this is to make um, everyone aware of really of what's really going on uh, behind the scenes of the Christian music industry, what's really going on in churches, what the radio, the Christian radio stations are wanting us to hear. Um, uh, I don't know if you've ever Can heard you do the, the concept. finances. Oh, about of the industry, because people don't as know far that. As, uh, how much they would actually make off of a song. So this was based, this number is based off of uh, um, the um, the statutory rate back in, oh gosh, 15, 20 years ago. Um, but say an artist does an album, a single comes out from that album. The album, uh, and they sell a million units of that single. The artist, if they've written the song, they'll make about sixty-five thousand mm -hmm. dollars from from that single. That's just the single. Um, that's not the album. If they go out and buy the album, and they sell a million units, if the artist has written all the songs on that album, up to uh, twelve, I think it is ten or twelve, because anything past that, the record label gets the money. So up to ten or twelve songs, if they've written all those songs. They get sixty-five thousand dollars, and if it's sold a million, look at sixty-five thousand for each uh, for each song. I believe my numbers are right. Anything after that, 10, 12 songs, thirteen, fourteen songs, that money goes to the record label. So they stand to make a lot of money, but um, again, it goes back to the point: what are you doing this for? Mm -hmm. What is the reason? And and we're going to have another um, episode where we talk about. Um, worship leaders and becoming worship leaders because you want to be famous mm -hmm. um it's the same thing it's it's the same thing and it's it's sickening it it hurts 
because um, our only aim is to be the hands and feet of Christ. Uh, Paul says that he's pleading with us, through us. He's making his plea through us to the world. And uh, we mess that up when we are striving for money, when we're striving for fame so and evil. fortune. It's so evil when you really yeah. think about it. Yeah. It's, like you said, sickening. It's, it's evil. It's like, it hurts. How could we it do hurts. this and, and call ourselves believers? And again, I'm going to say it again. You guys, if you've all heard by now what um, what happened with Israel Houghton, please pray for, pray for him. Do not judge him. Pray for him. Um, and we'll talk about um, that in greater detail. Um, not that, but um, what happens in the span of an artist's life. Uh, they go from on fire for God and sharing the gospel through music to mm -hmm. falling into sin. Um, it's not something that you can say, well, yeah, I figured he was going to do that. No, you can't say that because you would do the same thing mm -hmm. if presented with whatever it is that you are easily tempted with. Mm -hmm. If you don't have backup, you don't have accountability, you would fall too. Mm -hmm. So don't judge um, Israel. Pray for him. Mm -hmm. And pray for all the people who who uh, were touched by him, people that were watching him because the world was waiting. Mm -hmm. The world was waiting for this. Mm -hmm. So... Um, we're going to sign off and I encourage you to tune in, not only tune in next week, um, but share, share these videos, talk about this with, um, your friends, uh, just be aware. There's no such thing as white music. There's no such thing as black music. Uh, there shouldn't be. The record labels want you to think that only white people can do this. Only black people can do this. God created us. We're, we're like Baskin Robbins. He loves every flavor mm -hmm. that we have to present mm -hmm. back to him. We shouldn't be separating it. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be separating it. So we love you guys. Have a blessed day. My brother's about to go back to the Philippines. So yes, be I praying am. for him and his family um, with their orphanage out there. Um, God is doing some awesome things in their life. And uh, it's just a blessing to have him here. And uh, I'm excited. Have a great weekend. Have an amazing Easter. God bless. Love you guys. Love you.